Good morning from a very bundled up me. <laughs> come a long way since last week when it was like 70s weather crazy which is good though have my knits on my newly finished headband with a twist my void shawl by Melanie Berg which has moth holes in it and my anti-cline mitts by Emily Green Knits I'll leave it all linked in the description box for you Welcome to the start of a new vlog. Today is Friday. I'm back from my walk. I've got um, some deviled eggs going on the stove. Brittany is going to come over today. We're going to make some bucket hats with the Merchant and Mills free bucket hat pattern. Yeah, I'm excited. Today is going to be a good day. I'm looking forward to the weekend. Um, I thought I would start off this vlog. So next week I have a Friendsgiving party that my friend Emily hosts every year. I'm very excited about it. We call it plaidsgiving actually because everybody wears, <coughs> excuse me, plaid. <laughs> like the hipsters that we are. But I really wanted to do like a little dry run of my like outfit and makeup with you. So I've put on this dress that I've had literally for over a decade. I bought this at a thrift store. It was like one size too big for me. And I just like, it was long also, like really long. And I like chopped it and made it more of a bodycon dress and took it in just a little bit. And I've literally had this dress for over 10 years now. It is a wardrobe staple. I always bring it out at this time of year. I don't know if you can tell, it's like the perfect like dark cranberry red color. You'll probably see it better when I go into the dining room. So I think I'm going to wear this with like a little plaid um, like over shirt over it and some cute shoes. We'll see how it goes. And then I also want to do a little dry run of my makeup with you. So you might be able to see back over there in that chair. There's a box. And I told you guys that I'm going to be working uh, potentially with Merit on an upcoming collaboration. And today is that day. So I'm really, really excited. Jafar is also really excited. <laughs> I just like can't believe I'm even on their radar. I love Merit Makeup so much. So when they asked if I wanted to partner with them on a few videos for the next few months, I was like, yes, sign me up. I am a huge, huge fan. So they sent me their um, La Fête set. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If it's Fête means party in French. And since this is going to be Plaidsgiving slash Friendsgiving, um, for Thanksgiving this year, I thought like what better way to bust out the set than to use it for that and to show you guys. So let's go open it and see what's in it. Okay, have the box. Mm, excited? Okay. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, here it is. This is the Lafette set. It comes in this gorgeous like terracotta clay colored packaging. And it has these limited edition mini sizes. Some of them are full size, like the highlighter and the lipstick. And I think the uh, brow pomade are all full size. The minis are of the mascara and the Great Skin Serum, which is amazing. I have the full size. And if you have dry skin like I do, this is such a lifesaver, especially in the winter time. It has like hyaluronic acid and all of the uh, moisturizing stuff. It's so, so good. It's like a skin oil. So if you like skin oils, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I love the great skin product. Um, really, I have all of these, but just not in the same shades that they come in. Like the brow pomade of the Lafette set is the clear gel. So basically you just kind of like brush it in place and it will keep your brows in place. And then the lipstick comes in a colorway called Apertif. I don't have Apertif. This is like a gorgeous red shade, as you can see. Anyway, I feel like this will be the perfect the perfect thing for a little glow up for my Thanksgiving, Friendsgiving 
party that I'm going to next week. So let's have a little play and see what we think. So rather than opening up ones that I already have, I'm just going to use what I have because I don't want to open fresh ones when I have things already on the go. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Great Skin Serum, which like I said is like an oil spilling it on myself. All right, and then there aren't base products with the Lafette set. It's more like the party fun stuff, like the highlighter, lipstick, mascara, etc. So I'm going to use the complexion stick that I have. Okay, base done mostly except for blush but getting to that next i'm going to use the brow gel so again rather than using the clear one i have a tinted brow gel from them this is in the shade brown but the lafette set comes with clear okay and then next up i'm going to do some blush and it does come with this gorgeous red lipstick so i feel like this would be actually a really great it's kind of it's not orangey, but it's definitely a warm red as opposed to a cool red. So I want to try, I think this will be really pretty as a blush, just like applying some as a blush. So let's give it a go. So I'll put a little bit in the apples of my cheeks. Use the blending brush. We'll start with that. I'm a heavy blush user. I love blush, so I'll probably add some more once I put my glasses on and see what I think. Like, yeah, I think I already need a little bit more. Okay, that's amazing. Excited about that. And again, that's the lipstick that comes with the Lafette set and the colorway is called Apertif. All right, next is the eyes. Merit doesn't do eyeshadow. Unfortunately, I feel like that's like a missed opportunity. So I'm just gonna use my own eyeshadow really quick and just this light wash, Ooh. a light wash of brown. Next thing I'm gonna take from the Lafette set is a mascara. Again, I already have one, so I'm not gonna open a fresh, fresh one. Uh, it gives like a really, fluttery lash. It's not like a super volumizing lash, but it gives you those really pretty like fluttery lashes. You'll see what I mean in a second. I'll do a comparison. Okay, let me just bring you up close real fast so you can see the difference. Hopefully, mascara, no mascara. It gives just like a really fluttery lash look. And then the last thing from the set is the highlighter. Again, I already have my own, so rather than opening a new one, I will use my own. Okay, let's put on the glasses and see what we think about the amount of blush. Nope, needs more. Needs more. <laughs> I, totally, I really am crazy about blush, but it's like this in mascara, I feel make the most difference to my appearance in general it's like my favorite like if you could have one makeup product what would it be right mine would definitely be blush and mascara although living without eyeliner would also be sad but i don't use eyeliner every day and i feel like there are other products i can use for eyeliner like eyeshadows dark eyeshadows oh, so pretty all right and then last i'm going to apply the lipstick. That is the finished look. What do you guys think? Hey, let me take you over to the mirror, mirror, the window. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. It's like such a glowy. I am in love with that lipstick as the blush. You guys know if you've been watching me for a while that I am obsessed with that Merit blush. Like I literally used it on my wedding day. But I don't have any colors of blush that are this kind of red holiday-ish tone and I think it would be perfect to match the dress. So when I had that idea I had to give it a try and I think it looks so so pretty. Something really sweet that the product page of the Lafette set talks about 
is like buying it with a friend and then splitting it apart and using it together or sharing it, which I just think is such a cute idea. And I have a thought, like, because I have so many of those products already in the set, I feel like it's kind of a shame. So like, I'm not gonna open these. What if I shared this with you guys? What do you think? Let's do a giveaway for the rest and I'll share it. I mean, obviously it doesn't have the lipstick because I use that, so I'm not gonna send you something that I've used, but let's do a giveaway for the rest. My favorite giveaway prompt. I have not done a giveaway actually in a very long time, not since like the knitting podcast days, but my favorite giveaway prompt, tell me one good thing that happened to you today. It's my favorite. I love reading all the comments about it. So tell me one good thing that happened to you today in the comments, and then I will pick a winner and let you guys know on the next vlog, or maybe I'll respond to you there. I, I don't know, I'll figure out a way to get the word out about it. Tell me one good thing that happened to you, and then I will get, this off in the mail to you. If you want to purchase the LaFette set, I have a link below to shop through. And if you're a first time customer, I think it's first time, maybe it's over a certain amount. Let me look. If you're a first time shopper with Merit, you get this really cute uh, like signature bag. I'm using mine as a knitting project bag now. Let me, let me show it to you. This is the bag. Every first order from Merit ships with their signature bag. It's this really cute Thai style bag and I'm using it for my current knitting project, which is the Irving socks at the moment because clearly it matches perfectly. So yeah, every first order from Merit gets the free signature bag. And then I have my link to shop in the description box below if you guys want to try out the LaFette set. I'm just in love with it, especially that lipstick as the blush but anyway if you want to win the rest of the goodies in here please comment down below I'll select a winner yeah all right Brittany is on her way so I'm gonna go get changed I want to save this for Friendsgiving for next week I am so excited to make these bucket hats today I've been wanting to make this pattern for a long time it's been on my radar for a while to be honest I feel like it is more of like a summer project than a winter project but it's fine, I'll just make it now and then I will have it ready for summer of next year. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little makeup tutorial. By the way, on the topic of brand partnerships, I just wanted to say like very clearly, I hope you guys never feel any sort of pressure to buy something just because you know I'm recommending it. We're all individuals here. I love Merit Beauty. I am so excited that I'm even on their radar and that they want to work with me. So it's an easy thing for me to recommend because I already have like so many of their things. But I just never want you guys to feel like I'm pushing things on you in any way. Like, please don't buy it if you don't like it. Don't buy it if you don't have the money. I share these things because I love it. And if you love it too, great, amazing. Then you have some like recommendations from somebody that you, you know, know, because I guess we like sort of, we know each other, but don't know each other like super, super well. But you guys have been following me for a long time, you know, so it's nice to get things from people that you trust. But I never want you to feel like you have to get something just because you know I recommend it. I'm sure that goes without saying. I just wanted to put that out there. I love fashion and beauty products, so this is super exciting to me, but if it's not your thing, that's totally fine. I totally get it. All right, I just wanted to say that, and yeah, love you guys. I'm excited. I'm gonna go change out of this now, and I'll be back with you shortly. <music> Everything that I think could be okay. a viable Perfect. option, plain black, which I think is what I'm gonna do. Beige girl, beige girl. Oh, it keeps bad. Leopard <laughs> could be fine. Oh my gosh. These are some of our fabric choices that we pulled out as main fabric options. We have this lilac color corduroy 
red twill, lot, just lots of twills, lots of more like bottom weight fabrics. So I think that'd be better. The leopard could be funny. Maybe I'll make an extra one for my sister <laughs> along the way. She oh would probably God. love that. My sister loves leopard anything. But I feel like I'm personally, I've been thinking about this because I already know my fabric stash, but I am leaning towards either the plain black one or the purple one because I have still my, where is it? my Mika patch Aww. and I want to put my Mika patch yeah. like yeah like right front in the center. yeah front and center in the middle of the hat I think that'd be adorable oh, Jafar. But yeah I think like this if you want to do a two-tone color hat like and do like a half and half C that might be hard no <laughs> it would be maybe hard to pair in the wardrobe mm -hmm. but I think it would look cool together yeah. yes okay. it will and it will actually add a color too yeah but I, I don't know. I'm so curious about how that um, plaid one would. I feel like the plaid one would actually look really cool. I know. I mean, green. Ooh. Yeah, green would look great. Yeah. Would look fantastic. And it's got, because it's a bucket hat, it will have that, like, army aesthetic-ish yeah. thing to it. You know, like, cargo pants kind of style that's in right now. It's giving quirrell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, neither of these looks good with my out, my current outfit. <laughs> the purple will definitely be harder to pair in the wardrobe. The black one will be a lot easier to wear. ¿Por qué no los dos? He said lilac, but I think I'm gonna do black. I'm gonna do black. I know I'll wear it a lot more if I do the black one. I'll find some other use for that purple fabric eventually. And I just think it's so cute. That is cute. Brim. But this is cute too. This is cute too. I love that. I do. I can't. Do Why you not? want to make a plaid one also? We can make two at the same time? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. I'll make a purple and a black one. You make a green and a plaid one. Perfect. Okay. We're doing it. We're doing it. fabric selections. So Brittany is going to be making two hats. So am I. She's going to be we using. Are ambitious. Yes, we are very ambitious, but it's supposedly an easy project. <laughs> so for her first one, she's going to use this olive green, cottony, linen-y, denim -y fabric for the main. And then her lining, that's your lining for this yeah. one? Yeah. And then her lining is going to be this beautiful fabric that's like very botanical from Mood. And then I am using... Jafar is very invested in this corduroy. I've never seen him so crazy over a particular fabric. See, he knew you needed to make the purple. <laughs> yeah, he's also team purple. Um, I'm making this like lilac hat that has like, it's a corduroy and then the lining is gonna be this silky silk charmeuse. Well, it's not silk, it's just charmeuse. I'm pretty sure it's a polyester of some sort, but it's very thick. So I think it'll be a good um, lining fabric. And then my second one is gonna be plain black. And then the lining is going to be this gingham for the interior that I used for my sexy picnic top a long time ago. And then Brittany's second one, this plaid that I used for a pair of pants a long time ago. Ooh, pants. Yes, they turned out really great. Yeah. And then this solid black for her interior. I'm really excited to see how that plaid one yeah. turns out. <laughs> in the sewing room right now. I'm setting up my second machine. I sew on a Bernina 1090. That's the machine that my grandmother gave me um, when she became unable to sew and I treasure that machine and I have always say that like if our house caught fire that's what I would after my cats. That's the really the only thing I would care about saving is my sewing machine because of the sentimental value. But until I started sewing on that machine, I used a brother machine, just like a simple, this one's the LS2125i. 
and just a really basic machine. And I've always kept it because whenever I have people come over, like I do right now, or sometimes Emily comes over, then I can have a second machine for somebody else to sew on. So I'm setting that one up right now for Brittany. Um, the only thing is she's left-handed, so I'm gonna put a piece of tape on the other side of the pedal, not the pedal, the presser foot, um, with the seam allowance for her so she can sew more easily left-handed. The seam allowance for this pattern is one centimeter. So basically all I'm gonna do is take a ruler that has centimeters on it and then measure down from where the needle drops down and one centimeter away from that. <laughs> okay, so take your bobbin and your bobbin thread and your bobbin casing. Beef that little like down. Lip. Yeah, down and under. Okay. Through the window. Yep, exactly. Cool. How fast should I be going? Whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable doing. giving surgical cap. Gray all gray is that me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so cute once the brim is on it. Hi Jafar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I were very ambitious and thought we could finish two hats each right. before Andrew and I had to go tonight, but we unfortunately did not. So you're just gonna come over early tomorrow. We'll finish them tomorrow. Andrew and I are heading to and a we're show. to dinner. I know, oh, that would be so great. <laughs> yes, yes. But I think we are pretty far. We started on like the brim section of it. We had to do like the top stitching around it and then like attach it. And, yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. So, so many times. Yes, but I think they're turning out really cute. Which one are you more excited about right now? The green one, I think, because mm -hmm. the structure. Yeah, 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 that's true, that's true. It's got more of the, mm -hmm. yeah, structure to it. The purple one is actually, I think they're it's both gonna, gonna be great, but I think the purple one's gonna be good. I can't decide of which one to attach my little Mika patch to, though. Mm, yeah. It's gonna be a tough choice. The only choice. reason I was thinking the purple is because Jafar chose it. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> now I can't choose the black one. <laughs> and I just arrived in Bushwick. We're going to a punk show tonight. We're seeing a show uh, from one of Andrew's favorite bands called the Flatliners. Protect your ears, people. But they do have the best restaurants up here and menus. Yes, I mean Bushwick and Williamsburg. In my opinion, it's much better food than South Brooklyn. Personal opinion. Oh no! So tell everyone what happened. I got the date wrong. Oh no! <laughs> to be fair, they confuse me a lot. I know they their made it seem. Instagram made it seem like it was this week, and I added to me being dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to Bushwick last night, as you saw, and it turns out the show was next weekend, not this weekend. But their Instagram did make it very confusing. We're like, See you in Brooklyn, and yeah. I'm like, oh. So that was a bummer, but yeah, I know, it's okay. Um, but we ended up just coming home and watching, what did we watch? I don't even know, I was so tired. Was it a Waldemar? Yeah. Yeah, so it was this, I think we've talked to you guys about this before, but this um, art critic or art educator named Waldemar, and I do not know how to pronounce his last it's name. Like Janushak. Janushak or something. But anyway, he's a British presenter, and he just does the best, most approachable. He's like your favorite teacher if he was an art teacher. He's just like... Yeah, it's it's really good. I'll leave um, the YouTube channel linked below because he has a lot of content up on YouTube on this channel called Perspectives, and he's also got a lot of content on Amazon Prime. But as you know, with subscription um, networks, they like go in and out of availability, so I don't know what, if it's on Prime right now or not. Uh, anyway, so we watched one of his things last night, and then just cuddled and went to sleep. And here we are this morning, making toadies and 
pouring myself some coffee. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do today. Andrew's gonna go play games with his boys and I might do some sewing. Brittany and I did not finish the hats as you saw. I think she might come over today later on to finish them potentially, but we're supposed to all be going out to dinner tonight. Um, some girls that I used to work with, so looking forward to that. But I could start another project today. We'll see. I'm about to start working on my bucket hat. I'm gonna at least try to finish up mine before she gets here so that I can help her if she needs it. We're batch sewing two of them each, and this is where I got with one of mine. So I did this top stitching. I need to kind of give this a little gentle steam, but I did all the top stitching on um, the brim of the hat, which has you actually do it in a spiral, but I didn't really want to do that. I wanted it to be even. So I did it even on all of them except for the last one where I did it in a spiral and I just, yeah, I'm much happier with it um, even and just like stopping and starting in each circle using the presser foot as a guide for where to start the next one. So I'll probably do that on my black one as well. So this is how the lavender one is turning out. And then my black one, I need to start the brim on that one. All right, I finished the first one, my first one, the purple one. I don't love it. Here's why. So the pattern pieces that you cut out for the self and the lining are the same. They just have you cut them out multiple times and then in certain situations they have you sewing with a 0.9 centimeter seam allowance and then the full centimeter seam allowance presumably because one side like the lining needs to be slightly smaller than the outside is what I'm guessing but it still results despite lots of pinning in puckering where it just doesn't fit or come together properly. Basically the instructions tell you to sew the brim to the lining first and then do the self, but I'm flip-flopping it on this hat to see how it turns out if I sew the brim to the self and then do the lining second. It's the same concept. So fingers crossed it works out. I'll let you know. Oh yeah, this is so much better. Yeah, so see, I would definitely recommend, and there is some puckering on the lining, but again, it's in the lining, so you're not gonna see it as much as you would with the, uh, yeah, to like make sure it's fully bagged out. Let's see there's still a lot of excess fabric in there. So really what needs to happen is that the lining pieces need to be different from the self, but you know, again, it's a free pattern. All right, I'm gonna press this. I'm going to edge stitch and seal the uh, little gap that I left to turn the hat inside out, and then it's done. And I do have my Mika patch. It's a little patch that I got on Etsy and Andrew painted a little white chin on there for me. It looks just like her, honestly. So now I need to decide if I'm going to put it on the black hat or if I'm going to put it on the purple one. Really though, the black hat turned out so much better. I'm tempted to take this one apart from the brim and re redo it, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just being too perfectionistic, but it, it does like bug me a little bit. It's not, it's not, to a standard I would really like. So definitely if you make this Merchant & Mills hat on that stage, sew the brim to the self first and then do the lining. I'll probably put it on the black, the black hat. Yeah, she's a black hat, so it makes sense. Oh, it's so cute. It's gonna be adorable. And I love the gingham interior also. It's a very good neutral hat. It's so much better you see what i mean there's still like a little few like a few spots well it doesn't even look so bad there i need to pull off the threads from when i seam ripped it like right there there's a little pucker in it this looks so much better so definitely if you make the merchant and mills free bucket hat sew the brim to the self before you do the lining because if it doesn't look as good on the inside it doesn't matter so much Hello! The house is feeling ultra clean right now. I am lounging on the couch. I finished the Merchant & Mills bucket hats. 
lounging on the couch right now watching some YouTube. My friend Brittany is coming over again today. We're going to be going to dinner later on this evening. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, so yeah, for now, just kicking back, watching YouTube, chilling out. Hope you guys are having a great Saturday. Oh, I just like... I just got some packages delivered over here and so I thought I would unbox them with you to show you what I got. Let me set you down. Um, okay, so the first one, I love, I have fallen in love with uh, Zatar Spice. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly and I should know because I'm half Middle Eastern, but um, it's a really delicious spice blend and it's so good on like so many things, honestly. Pita bread, chicken, fries, vegetables, you know, you name it. And I saw this recipe I'll leave it linked in the description box and it calls for Zatar. So I really wanted to get some because it's honestly been on my radar for a little while. And yeah, so got some Zatar. And then my other package. Okay, I had to move it off of the counter because it's so big. This next purchase, I bought two because I'm trying to decide which one I want to keep, which one I like better, which one is more comfortable. You might think this one's a little bit strange, but hear me out. So um, I've been looking for ways to intensify my walks a little bit. I love walking around outside. As you guys know, I do about three and a half miles every day. Um, of power walking and we're just like walking as fast as I can. I don't run. It's just running is too hard on my joints. It's too intense. I just like the walking, but I want to get maybe a slightly more intense exercise. So I was just kind of like looking up um, outdoor walking like regimens or something like that. And a lot of posts suggested weighted vests so you can like increase the intensity of the walk but without having to do exercise that is too stressful on your joints as it is for some people like it is for me as running is. So I bought two weighted vests. Let's try them on. So here's what one of them looks like. It's a lot heavier than I was expecting it to be. I looked up online like how heavy I should go. Apparently you should be getting um, and don't listen to me, like, you know, like I said, I'm not an expert, I'm not a doctor, I'm just going by research that I found online, and I share my experiences with you guys. Um, but they said that you should get a weighted vest that is no more than 10% of your body weight, ideally between 5 and 10%. And then when it's on, actually, it's quite comfortable. So I do really like this one, so this will be a tough one to beat. Oh my gosh, did I have one on backwards? I did! I had it on backwards! Okay, hold on, now I have to try it on for real to make sure I like it because it was on upside down. I don't know, it's comfortable. I still really like it, but I actually preferred it upside down. Okay, let's try on the other one. Hmm, they're very similar, but somehow this one feels better weighted to me. This one feels like more of the weight is in the back. So it's like making me want to lean back, which might be good while you're walking actually, because while you're walking, sometimes your natural inclination is to make your, is to like lean forward. So this would probably be good for your posture, to like while you're walking to keep your center of gravity up and down instead of the tendency to lean forward sometimes. So that could be actually a plus, but there's more bulk on the sides of this one too. So like if I have my arms like this, I can feel it. It's a tough choice. Okay, let me do another try on of the other one. Yeah, I just think this one is more evenly, more evenly weighted and it's definitely not as bulky on the side because it's a little bit lower. So it's not like poking me like when I'm swinging my arms. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep this one. What you making? Lemon bars. We just got back from our weekly grocery shop. Just got back from the grocery and this is going to be what we're dubbing 
salad week. So we're gonna be making a different interesting salad every day this week. We have some lemon herb chicken salad, a sesame chicken salad, a Brussels sprout salad, a fajita salad, and then Friday we're gonna be going to the punk rock show that we tried to go to this previous Friday. We went there. Yes, we so. did go, we just didn't go to see a show. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I'm excited about this. I think it'll be fun. And we have to come up with some interesting drink pairings. And we're making some lemon bars for the week. Well, I say we. Andrew is making us lemon bars for the week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, teaser, uh, the fajita salad is going to have some smoky chipotle stuff. Ooh. So I'm going to pair it with a mezcal mark. <sighs> That's a great idea. I need to think of something for mine. All right, it is night one of salad week. Are you excited, babe? Riveted. <laughs> we love salads. Anyway, we are excited for salad week, or I'm really excited for salad week because, Ooh. yeah, salads! <laughs> because it's possible to make really good salads. It's just you have to vary the textures and have some things that are cooked in the salad, etc. So it'll taste Amazing. I'm going to combine two recipes from Half-Baked Harvest for my first one. We're gonna do four salads this week. We're each alternating every other night. Who cooks it? Of course, we're gonna be like cooking together, but um, I'm making for my first one, this grilled lemon herb chicken salad, avocado salad with honey mustard bacon dressing, but I'm also combining it with the balsamic peach basil chicken salad with crispy prosciutto. I'm not gonna use all the ingredients from both of them, but I'm basically gonna take the best from both. And Half-Baked Harvest, man, I haven't cooked anything from it before, but a lot of my friends like it and the pictures look amazing. So I'm excited to try some of these recipes for the first time. We'll let you know how it goes. Basically, the first thing I wanna do right now though is whip up the marinade for the chicken so that the chicken can be marinating for a bit. And then uh, Andrew will join me and we'll cook the rest of it together. the chicken in the marinade it smells amazing now moving on to prepping the rest of the salad basically the only thing I'm taking from the second one the balsamic peach basil is just that I want to incorporate fruit into it so we're going to be putting an apple in um, and then I'm eliminating the orzo from the lemon chicken recipe and using like arugula as a base, but like adding a lot of veggies. So have the tomatoes still, have some avocado, just beefing it up essentially without the orzo in it. This chicken smells so good. For this one, it is all in the marinade. And I know I have a lot of vegetarian and vegan followers on this channel. So just look up the marinade for this one because it smells so good. I think tarragon would probably also be good in this one. Yeah. It kind of, the scent lends itself to yeah, tarragon. It kind of, yeah, it does smell like tarragon. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's so, it smells so good. We'll report back with a taste test though. All right, here are the final salads. Let's give it a go. 